and welcome to Eye on Africa, France 24's program dedicated to the continent. I'm Charlie James, and these are the headlines. Doctors Without Borders is calling on the UN to act in Libya, saying thousands of refugees, migrants, and asylum seekers are being arbitrarily held in detention centers. Some Nigerian migrants caught in Libyan smuggling and prostitution rings are able to escape and return to their homeland. But as France 24's reporters found, rebuilding their lives is a struggle. And the African Diaspora International Film Festival opened Friday here in Paris. We sit down with the director of one film featured to discuss the festival's mission and reach. We begin in Libya, where the United Nations has brokered a fragile ceasefire between armed groups in Tripoli. But Friday, Doctors Without Borders said thousands of desperate people are trapped in detention centers. The group is urging UN agencies to act during the break in heavy fighting. Majulian has the story. Deserted streets patrolled by the Bab Tajura militia group in western Tripoli. The more intense fighting has stopped in Libya, but skirmishes continued on Wednesday. A UN-brokered ceasefire hangs by a thread. When it's the language of guns that dominates the scene, it's very hard for any government to undertake its tasks. It's almost impossible for state institutions to function. This is why disarming armed groups must be at the top of the priority list. Far from laying down weapons, another key player, Khalifa Aftar, who was close to the country's former ruler, Muammar Gaddafi, has suggested his group could join in the fighting and walk on the capital to prevent it from falling and restore safety. Recent clashes between Tripoli's rival groups erupted on August 27th. At least 63 people were killed and 159 wounded. Since violence broke out, aid groups have been unable to provide several thousand migrants held in detention centers with food. They're calling for them to be evacuated urgently. Let's take a look at some of the other top stories from across Africa. Former Angolan President Jose Eduardo dos Santos will officially quit active politics Saturday, stepping down as the ruling party's chairperson. He will hand that baton to new president, Joao Lorenzo. Dos Santos has dominated the nation's politics for nearly four decades, but says he wants to make a dignified exit. Fuel shortages continue in Kenya. Motorists have been scrambling for petrol, causing long lines at the pump and massive traffic jams. The government introduced a 16% tax on oil products last week. Now fuel transporters and unions are calling for a nationwide strike and threatening to block roads. And Zimbabwe's former President Robert Mugabe says he now accepts Emerson Menengagwa as the country's legitimate leader. Mugabe initially accused his successor of leading a de facto coup to oust him last year. But Mugabe now says the transgressions are behind him and has called for unity. Nigerian migrants trying to reach Europe are often duped by human traffickers or forced into prostitution rings. And over the last year, thousands who have been abused in Libya have voluntarily gone back to their homeland. France 24's team in Nigeria looked at how repatriated young migrants are trying to rebuild their lives. These 160 Nigerians have just landed at Lagos International Airport. After a failed attempt to reach Europe, they've come back from Libya, helped by the International Organization for Migration's Assisted Voluntary Return Program. These young adults will have to go through a series of interviews before officially entering Nigeria. At the arrival of these special flights, Edo State always deploys its anti-trafficking agents. The information you gave earlier is crucial in order for us to help you. It is from this list of names that the authorities will choose the people they will help. So if you haven't been identified, they will not choose you. When they come to select people among you, you can be sure that you won't be included. Every week, hundreds of people flee Edo State using different migration routes. Ivy is a former victim of human trafficking. Sequestered for several months in Libya, the young woman is rebuilding her life here in Benin City. 
She says that some days are harder than others, especially when she receives calls from friends arriving in Europe. I have to console myself, tell myself the truth, that I really need to do something. I can't just be at home. It will not help me. So I have to go out there, you know, try to my pastor help me with something and not also my friends and I have to borrow money from somewhere to add to it to open this place that you're saying. Hundreds of migrants like Ivy are regularly repatriated to Benin City. Chide also preferred to return to Nigeria. He tried to reach Italy by boat but was intercepted by the Libyan Navy. Once he was back home, Edo State and the IOM offered him the chance to take a business management training course. To save money for a farm of his own in the future, he started a small recording studio. I come back with nothing, so I was ashamed one way. But on other side, I still need to advise myself. And because if I start uh, shaming for what happened, I, I will not be having that opportunity of doing what will make me cover up. According to Nigeria's National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons, Nigeria has repatriated 8,000 people from Libya over the past 18 months. The African Diaspora International Film Festival opened Friday right here in Paris. It's a film fest with a mission to strengthen the role of African creators in the world of cinema and also to instill a better understanding of the similarities across the diaspora's cultures, languages and nationalities. One film featured this year is Sighted Eyes, Feeling Heart which explores the life of Lorraine Hansberry, the author of A Raisin in the Sun. And we're joined in studio by the film's writer and director, Tracy Heather Strain. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, A Raisin in the Sun was and continues to be a huge force in American theater, uh, but your film is actually the first in-depth examination of her life, of the writer's life. What drew you to her story? I was drawn to her story when I was 17 years old. I first heard about her through a play about her called To Be Young, Gifted, and Black. And over time, I decided that there should be a film about her and nothing was happening by other people who were more experienced. And I actually left a job in advertising, got into filmmaking, and here I am 40 years later, I've made the first feature documentary about her. Right? She was so compelling. At 17, I'd never met a young woman who felt like I felt like I could really connect to. Now, the film's title comes from Hanbury's own words, uh, that someone with sighted eyes and feeling heart can't be unmoved by injustice. Now, her story may be American at heart, uh, but injustice is a global theme. What do you find when you uh, talk to people who have seen this film who are fr from outside of America? What really connects about her story? Lorraine's a really compelling character. She is so concerned about the human condition and uh, to be to write this play that's become this American classic, and it was actually translated into, into 30 languages within the first two years, um, uh, people have, been, have felt that she is speaking to them. She's speaking about the black experience in ways that haven't been explored before authentically. Um, it, it, the play, her play, Raising the Sun, is funny. She was a humorous person, but she also had the strength of conviction to believe that you could use art to change the world. And I think people can identify with that. I think we're always looking for ways to make society better. And Lorraine was really focused on using art. And I think that's a universal experience for people. Uh, I mean, she's just, she's just really interesting. She's very complex. And she actually cared about Africa way before many people were concerned in, in the United States. It took you 14 years to get this film made. You may know her story better than anyone else at this point. Why do you believe that for as famous as uh, Raisin in the Sun is, how come she isn't more well known? I think there's a combination of things, but I think one of them is that she died young. She died just six years after the 1959 Broadway premiere of her documentary. And I, a new movement was brewing. Uh, there was a, it was called the Black Arts Movement. And I think there was a way that a raisin in the sun got pushed aside and people didn't realize how radical it was and how radical she was. And so they didn't think she was speaking to them. And I think that, I think that it's taught in schools in a way that very dampens who she really was. And so I want to ask you uh, about the, the film festival, the African Diaspora International Film Festival. Uh, why was it important for you to show your film 
uh, at this festival? Um, it was really important to show my film here because I wanted an international, another international audience to see the documentary. I, again, I think she has an important message for the world. And I think this festival is really important. We need to know more about each other. African Americans, Africans, people of African descent need to know more about each other, but other people need to know about all of our diverse experiences. And how did you, how were you approached by the festival? Uh, the uh, festival programmer, Diara, came to me. Uh, she heard about the film and uh, she asked me if I would be willing to come. And today I, I even spoke to school students at an international school about, the, they watched the film today and we talked about it and they were, they really enjoyed it. Well, thank you so much for joining us here on France 24 uh, and for your work bringing this story to light. Uh, and if you are here in Paris, the African Diaspora International Film Festival is running through this weekend and Sighted Eyes Feeling Heart is showing Saturday evening. Yes, thank you so much. That's all for this edition, but don't go away. There's more news coming up next right here on France 24.